Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back to Seed to Play channel. My name is Brooke and I'm gonna do a quick little intro. If you're only interested in the garden tour, I would recommend going ahead and skipping ahead. There'll be chapters down below. Um, but if you wanna hang out with me for a minute while I uh, eat some breakfast, uh, I would love to have a quick chat. I have a birthday coming up. Um, I am turning 30 and I don't want to say I've been struggling with it. I think I've just been very deep in thought about my 20s and I was talking to my dad the other day and I think when you turn 30, it's really the first time in your life that you can be like truly reflective on an intellectual level. <laughs> um, because right, when you have your 10th birthday, you're just still a kid and when you have your 20th birthday, you're kind of just like not, you know, none of us were our best selves when we were 20, like <laughs> let's just be honest. Um, and when you're 30, I think really it's the first time that you can kind of look back and have this like holistic view of how you came to be the person you are today. And this isn't something I really talk about very often um, because I don't really find it relevant to gardening, but it is relevant to like who I am as a person. Um, I don't want to say I've had a hard life because there are plenty of people who have had a harder time than I have and I've had a wonderful, wonderful journey so far, don't get me wrong, but um, it hasn't been easy. Uh, my dad became disabled when I was 10 years old. We moved across the country. I experienced a lot of bullying. Um, I mean, at such a terrible time in my life when my dad had become disabled and my whole world basically had turned on its head. and. Um, you know, there was that and, you know, then things got a lot better. And then when I was, gosh, 16 or 17, I started becoming really sick with undiagnosed celiac. I had a lot of traumatic things that I'll never talk about in public happen um, in college. And um, I started going to therapy. Uh, that was a great moment for me is um, finding some mental health professionals. Um, you know, I got in a really bad car accident. I was getting into the workforce. I was in a really emotionally abusive friendship um, that actually uh, was one of the reasons I moved to Texas. Um, and, you know, then this car accident that should have killed me. I was sexually harassed in the workplace. I got fired from two jobs. Like, I had uh, a really rough <laughs> few years like I had a really rough run for a while um, and I was sick the whole time and I had no idea um, so that was a lot I'm gonna take another bite and then we'll get into the better parts so after uh, all of that <laughs> uh, I think I have this really deep deeply aggressive love for gardening because when I really started spending a lot of time in the garden probably five six years ago it kind of correlated with like all these terrible things like stopping happening. Um, when I got my community garden plot in the fall of 2019, that correlated with me finally getting no diagnosed with celiac disease um, and just feeling better. Like I don't really know that I remember a time in my adult life before I got diagnosed with celiac when I was 25 that I felt good. I was just always sick. and. So there's part of me that feels like I missed out on so much, right? I had friends that were traveling and doing all these things that I just fully missed out on. It's so funny, I almost feel like my journey with gardening and not being so sick anymore, um, it almost kind of made up for all that time I missed. Like it almost made up for that vibrancy because that's the best word that I can really find to describe how I feel in the garden. I feel so vibrant, I feel so, alive and really my my time in the garden has taught me oh my god so many life lessons like we we would be here for hours if i could explain them all to you but i think it's just really helped me be closer with myself um which i thought i had met myself deeply like i think when you go through therapy and i've been through literal years i mean stints of therapy if you added it all up it would be a lot um and i think that's when you like think you meet yourself and i don't really know that i agree with that i think 
I think when you go to therapy and you're working through these really tough things, um, I think you undo the person that you never wanted to be because ultimately when you go through these bad things in your life you become a person that you don't like um i used to be a very very cold cold person i used to not be a very nice person um <clears throat> i used to be a very angry person and so i think i think therapy undoes a lot of that that you never that should have never happened to you in the first place um but then what i think gardening has done is it shown me the person that I actually want to be. Um, I want to be patient. I want to be nurturing. I want to be hardworking. I want to be vibrant. I want to be creative. So when I think about the story of my 20s, gardening is so closely linked to that because um, while I think all of my traumas and all of my hardships uh, made me a stronger, more resilient person, I think that it made me into a person I never wanted to be. And I think gardening has really shown me the person I wanted to be. So, um, those are my deep intro thoughts. <laughs> you sat through all of that deep, uh, that deep stuff, thank you. And I'm happy you're here. And I've had so much fun sharing my journey. And uh, I am ready to tackle a new decade. What we're going to do today is uh, I have been working my booty off, um, getting some projects done and getting the garden to a place of maintenance. Um, but your girl's got a lot of big dreams <laughs> and uh, she's making them happen. So we are going to go through the whole entire garden, start to finish, back to front. There's a lot to chat about. We've been doing a lot of projects. Um, and also I want to kind of look back on where we started with the garden. We've only had this, this house for a year. And when I look out, which is currently where I'm looking, when I look out, I mean the difference um, with what we started with and what we have now is just night and day. Let's go check out the garden. Also, can we just really quickly talk about how adorable this gardening mug is? I found it at a random Ace Hardware um, when I was trying to kill some time because I was super early to a tattoo appointment. She doesn't keep coffee warm, but she's real cute. Okay, y'all, so we're gonna start with the veggie gardens. Um, we have this original bed that was here uh, when we bought the house. Um, this bed is all full of potatoes. So what I figured out was the soil is so nice and loose that it was the perfect spot for potatoes. So they've almost all come up, but we definitely have a few that didn't. And also what I learned about this bed is with how the sun is, um, we need to grow next year more shade tolerant things in here because a lot of my root crops didn't do amazing. I mean, they did pretty good. Could have, they could have done a lot better if they would have had more sun. So because it was my first fall garden, uh, I learned a lot, but we have a bunch of different types of potatoes. Um, I did film myself planting them, but like the sun was right in my face and it wasn't a very good video. So I didn't, I didn't post it. Planting potatoes is super easy. And if you haven't done it yet, I highly encourage you to do it. Even if it's just in like a big pot, um, I think it's super fun. So we have a bunch of varieties. We have Yukon Golds, um, oh my gosh, uh, Fingerlings. We have banana potatoes. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Norland Red. Uh, Huckleberry Gold, Kennenbeck, German Butterball. We got a lot of potatoes, okay? I mean, it, this is a 16 by four foot bed. There's a lot of potatoes that can fit in here. So I'm super excited. We'll probably harvest these around May-ish. Um, that's when we harvested them last year or a couple of years ago. But when we harvested them a couple of years ago, it was at my community plot and we harvested them a little early. Um, I would love to actually wait until the tops die back um, and actually see how big they can really get. And then moving on, we have so many onions planted. <laughs> so many so all of the beds we're looking at right now are on the east side of our property um so these get like blasted with sun at the end of the day during the hot season so the reason i organized this the way that i did is because what we plant in here for for the summer aka like june through august um which is which are our worst hottest months 
um, they have to be things that can take the heat. So what's gonna go in here are gonna be um, okra, uh, melons, we need to be able to put stuff here that can take the afternoon sun uh, that gets like the hottest. So what we have in here right now are onions and there's a lot of them. I think I counted 70, as in seven zero onions. Um, but we love onions, we eat them all the time, they store really well. And we have, oh my gosh, a red variety. <laughs> and they're all short day onions. A red variety, yellow grano, Texas legend, and something else. There were four varieties. Um, so super excited for that. The other thing I have in here is garlic. I've never successfully grown garlic and I'm honestly terrified but um, but I'm also excited it's looking healthy based on all my research it looks pretty good um, but only time will tell so we when we harvested onions a few years ago uh, we usually harvest them in like the May time period um, they tend to like flop over when they're ready. Now, the thing that I love about having the same gardening space for multiple years is you start to get volunteer plants. And volunteer plants are basically plants that self-seeded. Um, it's usually flowers, um, but sometimes it can be vegetables if you've left something. And so I always see it as kind of like a win, like a gardening win. Like, ooh, I've been here for a long time. And so the volunteers I have coming up right now are Alyssum and Alyssum is awesome to plant in the garden. It's a great cover crop. It's kept all of this bed pretty weed free um, and it doesn't root down super deep. So that's why I'm kind of letting it grow between my onions. Um, and then we also have some marigolds that are self sowing as well as some zinnias. So this is just clover. This isn't gonna hurt anything, which is why I'm leaving it. And in our other onion bed, we've got some parsley that's looking awesome. It does look like it's about to bolt though. When your parsley starts to get these really kind of long leaves, it's usually about to bolt. And then the sage is looking amazing. Sage really loves, loves this weather. And also if you're wondering what all this white stuff is, this is bone meal. So I always knew you were supposed to fertilize your onions with bone meal, but I never really knew why. Um, and I recently learned that the reason why is because bone meal is an immediately available form of phosphorus and phosphorus is what helps onions grow. And so in my head, I'm like, well, why wouldn't you just amend your soil with something that has phosphorus? So it turns out when the weather's cold, like, you know, when you plant onions, uh, the phosphorus that's in the soil is not bioavailable for the onions to take up via their roots therefore you have to supplement it so moving over to our long bed along the back this will probably be the first one that gets rebuilt um, I used a uh, weather shield wood um, but I did not build my beds very well last year <laughs> so my fiance really wants to rebuild this one first it's like bows you can see it it bows on the sides because I didn't really reinforce them very well and I also think it would be cool if it was like two like a 12 inch tall um, I really love the size um, it's really nice when you look out our back windows um, to just have this like big garden you know right there um, so We'll see what happens there, but also I want to talk about this one specifically because I struggled a little bit planting it for the spring. So I think I struggled planting this for the spring. I struggled planting this spring in general. I'm very used to having a fully clean slate. And what I mean when I say that is like, I'm used to having such a limited space that what I would do is I would just completely clear it, amend it, mulch it, start over. And I would plant in rows and it was very organized. Um, but since I have a garden in my backyard this year, <laughs> um, I have things like garlic that I planted that I need to work around. I have shallots that I need to work around. I had some kale plants back here that looked so good that I didn't want to pull them out because we were still eating off of them. So the transition in the garden has been something I've struggled a bit with this spring. Um, and I would be lying if I said it didn't make me really frustrated and like not really want to plant. So, but I, I had to, you know, you got it. You got to grow a little bit, pun intended. Um, so what I did was um, I actually moved all my sauce tomatoes to this bed. So all along the middle are all my sauce tomatoes. There's 30 of them. 
I grow a lot of sauce tomatoes. Um, and I will put up poles and do a floor to weave structure. Um, and then really I had to plant around some of this garlic and so I actually think I'm really gonna like it. I have these little pockets of basil and marigolds and then I'll have a squash and um, I'm trying squash again like this because we do deal with squash vine borer. However, I had some luck with squash last year because I planted it early and it was amongst my marigolds and my tomatoes and somehow it survived. I don't know how. Um, so I went for a couple other varieties of squash. I have gray zucchini, yellow neck squash, and Mexican tattoo squash. Um, and so that's really kind of the idea behind this is I just have these little pockets of stuff. Also, um, our five month old basset hound is getting so big. He looks like a real dog. Oh, oh. No, don't get in my onion bed. Indy cup but once I stepped back and kind of looked at it I was like oh this is kind of fun because I love like a cottagey kind of garden where there's not necessarily like a plan um I mean there is but it's not like this super strict thing so I think once it all grows in I'm really gonna like it um but I think it was just kind of getting me outside of my comfort zone figuring out how to plant it and even when I take these kale plants out I thought to myself I said Ooh, how fun would it be to like put some really beautiful zinnias and then you would just have like this little pocket of zinnias and so I'm getting more excited about it now but if you would have asked me last week when I was out here planting it I was just like angry <laughs> I was just angry that I couldn't like let my brain go on autopilot and just like do what I had always done so that's the story about this bed um, and also the other thing is I'm getting used to having seasons to plant stuff like the potato and onion beds will transition to our summer beds with sweet potatoes and okra and melons and um so yeah i'm i'm trying to get my head wrapped around the seasonality of it all um which i didn't think would be so hard what are you doing what's in your mouth <laughs> what is that is that a root now this bed doesn't look very impressive right now. This is a Vago Garden metal raised bed. Um, I clearly have not purchased any more of these, so take that for what you will. I do have a video setting it up. If, they, if these are your thing, totally fine. Um, they just weren't really mine. However, I've kept it um, because when you stand back and look at the garden, it's kind of this awesome like corner piece. Um, but also Cam and I were talking about maybe building like a triangular garden to like fit the corner. Moving on. Um, I'm trying an Oya for the first time. So, <laughs> hey buddy. <laughs> so Oyas um, are these really cool, uh, very porous clay pots and um, they you fill them with water and the plants, once they start growing, will actually kind of start to wrap their roots around the clay pot and take water as they need it. So for, for something, so for an environment like ours, it gets really hot and really dry. Um, I think it's gonna be a good option. So I'm really excited to try this. I don't know that I would put them in like every single one of my garden beds. I'm not sure how that would really work. Um, but in general, I'm just kind of working on irrigation in the garden. And I kind of realized that I didn't really have anywhere in the garden that was just kind of like wild. <laughs> so, um, I actually completely chaos gardened this and if you don't know what chaos gardening is it's generally just like you take some seeds and you toss them around and you water them and see what happens so I did that with this bed and it's got oh my god I don't even know what all I mixed it was cosmos uh, maybe echinacea nasturtium I did plant the nasturtium very specifically I have trailing nasturtiums around the outside so they'll spill over um, but yeah, there's some stuff coming up. I think I put calendula in here. There's some stuff coming up, but like really this is gonna be like a F around and find out kind of situation. So we'll see what happens. So one thing I promised myself I was gonna do a lot less of this year were fresh eating tomatoes. Now, if you've been here for any length of time, you're probably like, oh my God, she is ill. Send her to an institution. Oh, but let me tell you why. You're eating shit. You're gonna go back inside.
And so while it was super fun to grow all of those freaking tomatoes last year, I really kind of got us down to the ones that we really enjoy. Now with that being said, I think I may actually do a little experiment and not prune my heirloom indeterminants quite as heavily. Um, I've never done that before and I think it would be really interesting to kind of see what we end up with. Um, so in this bed we have all of the cherry tomatoes that I'm growing this year. It'll be white cherry, yellow pear, um, just a standard red cherry, um, sun gold, and sunrise bumblebee. I might have already said that one. There's five of them um, and they'll be great for freezing and they'll be great for fresh eating and salads. Um, and then we have the slicers in a different bed. So the slicers in that bed are gonna be Cher Cherokee Purple, Paul Robeson, uh, Dr. Weich's Orange, um, Valencia, and of course I'm for, oh, Ponderosa Pink. That one did really well for me last year. So I'm really excited to kind of have, be able to eat fresh more often. I really enjoyed that in the fall garden, just kind of being able to walk out here and get what we wanted for dinner and go back inside. Um, so we have peppers and tomatoes in this bed and guys look at these. Look at these snapdragons. They are just, I mean, breathtaking. I bought these from a plant sale and somehow they survived the winter. I have no idea how, but they're like big and beautiful and gorgeous. Um, and they're bringing, they're bringing me a lot of excitement and like hope for more color in the garden. As much as I love the color green, it's my favorite color. I love this. And also interplanted in all of these beds are marigolds. I'm a big marigold lover, not only for the flowers, but they have so many benefits. Um, they really tackle root knot nematode, like on a chemical level. Now this bed, we're doing a Linny Gold Tomatoes again so we can do sunshine sauce. It's been one of my favorite things. Um, I'm really hoping they do better this year. They kind of struggled a bit last year and I didn't do a very good job at supporting them. So I'm excited to have a better plan this year. <laughs> Um, and so that's what's going down the middle here and we have a little bit of a weird mix. We have some leeks that are still growing, um, a bunch of good looking spinach. And look at that spinach, this is Bloomsdale spinach and it is so tasty and it's, it's sweet and it's so good. We've been eating a lot of it um, so I didn't want to pull it and this is one of those beds that I was kind of struggling with because I just didn't, there wasn't like a perfect row to put things in um the other thing we still have is celery like our the pink celery is still doing great um we have mint in this bed which like everybody says i'm nuts for planting mint but i harvested a lot for tea um and it's a really good ground cover to suppress weeds um so yeah this bed has a few peppers like i'm just really trying to embrace the mosaic of it all, if you will. The other plan we'll have for this is this is where we're gonna try and grow loofah. So that's why there's nothing on this side of the trellis is because we're gonna, loofah is really best started from seed. Um, so I'll start some loofah seed here soon um, and see if we can get loofah to grow. And my thought is loofah is really aggressive. Um, I think it'll actually go bo down both sides of the trellis. Um, so once our cucumbers are done, cause we have a decently short season for cucumbers, once our cucumbers are done, I think uh, the loofah will have started to overtake those vines. Um, so I think it'll actually be really good timing, but only time will tell. And then last but very not least, this is the last veggie bed. Um, we have actually tomatillos um, on the outside here. And to be quite honest with you, they look terrible. Um, they don't look very strong. I'm really hoping they kind of come back. They already have blossoms on them, which is not good. And they also already have little tiny tomatillos. Um, so I've been picking these off every day um, to try and encourage more vegetative growth. Um, but I moved them over here because I did not do all the tomatillos last year. They were in too wet of a spot. Um, so I'm really hoping, this is honestly the, the drier spot we have in the garden. So um, I'm really hoping this improves my tomatillo yield, but uh, we're not starting off real hot, just to be honest. <laughs> and then um, here are all of our slicers that I already talked about. And then I think I finally got cucumbers in early enough. I have never been very good with my cucumber timing, um, but I started them from seed 
They look pretty good. It seems like they're about to put off runners pretty soon. I did two varieties, Silver Slicer, which does really well in the heat, and then a Be It Alpha Hybrid. Um, that seems like it's just kind of a good, you know, workhorse kind of a deal. Cucumbers are one of my favorite things out of the garden. Um, I just love cucumbers in general, but I feel like when you get them at the store, they're very watery tasting. Whereas I feel like when you get cucumbers out of your garden, they taste like a cucumber, which probably sounds a little dumb, but <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. So something you probably were checking out behind me while I was talking about some of the veggie beds um, is our new, I, I'm gonna call it a back fence hedge, I guess, but it is this back here. So this never used to be here. We built this this spring. Um, we just used some pavers from Home Depot. Um, there's like 40 of them. And I know that because they're 13 pounds each and I carried every single one. Um, and then we established the bed by using a no dig method. We did cardboard and then compost and topsoil and then a lot of mulch. Um, so in this first half of the bed that you're looking at now, this is actually where I'll be growing my wedding flowers. So um, I'm doing a separate video on that. Um, I'm actually just starting to get them planted. Um, and all of the wedding flowers that you'll see planted are either a test run for fresh or they're going to be uh, dried and then used in, used in the arrangements dried. So I'm really excited. Um, I've had uh, mixed results for germination, so I'm gonna have to kinda figure that out, but that's the first half of this bed. Now let me show you the second half of this bed, which is like my ideal dream state about what this whole thing is gonna look like. So I've been very fascinated for a long time about the idea of like a living wall. Um, Fences to me are like not the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, um, but you know, they have, they have to be there. So I would really like to cover them up as much as possible, which is why I had this idea. So I had a whole video about this, but when we moved into this house, I had some blackberry plants and I literally just kind of stuck them in the ground. I did not do a very good job of planting them and a lot of them didn't do well. So um, we're now in blackberry rehab mode. Um, but the goal eventually is to have this whole back fence be a wall of blackberries. Um, blackberries can get pretty big and wild. I mean, if you keep them pruned, they're really nice, but um, the goal is to have this just stunning wall of blackberries along the back fence. So when you look out from the back window, you see garden beds and then you just see like this living wall of blackberries. Um, and then this idea kind of got transformed. So currently in this half, we have seven blackberry plants of different varieties. And let me tell you, they are loving their new like compost mulch situation. I mean, they are so vibrant green. I've never seen them this happy before. So then what happened? Naturally, I was at a garden center with one of my good friends and I was picking up some plants just uh, for another project that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but I saw that rose bush and it's called a gold metal rose and it's a yellow rose. And yellow roses are kind of like this iconic culture thing in Texas. Um, but also my great grandfather uh, was known in the town that he lived in for growing roses because he grew a rose um, for every year that my him and my great grandmother were married. So he had this beautiful rose garden of all these different types of roses. Um, and between the roses, he had ice plant. Um, now ice plant is a little invasive, so don't come at me. Um, but the roses and the ice plants were something that he was known for. I have photos of his garden with this ice plant and this rose and it's just so cool. I never knew him, but my mom and him were super close. So I got this rose bush and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like stick it at the end. Not a big deal, right? I'm just gonna stick it at the end, um, let it have the end cap and we'll have this beautiful rose bush in the corner of the yard. Um, and then I got the ice plant and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. So then I was doing some research about good companion plants with blackberries because I was wanting to put something between the blackberries this year because they're not gonna get that big this year since they're small and recovering. So um, I was looking and lo and behold, the one of the companion plants for blackberries are rose bushes. 
call me crazy, you wouldn't be the first one, but I have this new dream that once I'm done growing my wedding flowers next year, we'll probably get some blackberry plants for that area. So next, like early spring, we'll finish filling that in with blackberries and I wanna start collecting roses. So I have this new vision of this back fence filled with blackberries and roses and it would be very thorny, I'm very aware. Um, that's fine with me, I don't care and actually it would probably stop the effing squirrels from coming from this dang tree. So that's kind of the dream and I'm really excited because really this yard had no landscaping whatsoever when we moved in except for the giant rock patch which we will talk about. Um, at the end but it's nice to have some like hardscaping and to have some space to work with that's not necessarily meant for edibles it's just meant for pretties so that's my dream of the blackberry rose hedge along the back fence um and we'll see how it works out i've dreamed crazier things that have happened just saying okay so now let's move on to the orchard because <sighs> some lessons learned y'all some freaking lessons learned. Also, just to level set, our orchard is now the orchard slash mini vineyard. That's exciting. Let's talk about the trees first though. So this beautiful thing is my Tropic Beauty peach. Now, this peach has really low chill hours, which I think is why it is thriving. We didn't have a consistently cold winter, um, so this one is thriving really well because of that. And when I tell you this thing is covered in peaches, y'all, there's so many peaches. Um, and actually we had to put, we had to put that ugly white plastic thing on there because I actually caught a squirrel climbing this tree and trying to eat baby peaches and that was before it rained so I think it was probably just looking for a water source can we for a second go back a couple years to squirrel wars yeah not good so I haven't seen him get back up here I think this white thing is actually working um, but also there's been rain so we might have squirrel wars 2.0 on our hands I'm not really sure yet but I'm not super stoked about it um, but this peach is doing really really well um, now our other peaches let's look at them this is my Sam Houston peach now the chill hour requirement for this one is a little bit higher but I also kind of pruned this one really aggressively and it was mostly because it wasn't really getting a good shape to it in addition to it pruning heavily it didn't really put on a ton of blossoms which either tells me we didn't get enough chill hours or I wasn't really doing a good job at fertilizing it um, and it didn't have quite enough nutrition to like make the blooms um, so it could have been a couple of things. The other thing I noticed is we had a ton of bees and pollinators uh, when my Tropic Beauty peach was blooming. Not so much with this guy, um, which is a little weird. So I have some learning and some thinking to do about that one. Um, but then we have one more peach that is like blowing my mind. So this is a rooted cutting from my old community garden and I'm five feet tall and I would say it's only maybe a foot away from being my height at the tallest branch. Um, so I'm really excited for this one and it looks like it has some pollinated peaches on it. I should probably peel those off to make it focus on like upward growth. But uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm really pumped about it. Um, it's doing really, really well and it seems to really like the spot it's in. Um, and I don't know what kind of peach it is because uh, they didn't know what kind of variety it was, but whatever it is, it seems to be doing really well. The peach tree I took it off of was a, was a pretty old peach tree that was really healthy and well adapted to the area. So I'm not surprised that it's doing so well, but it's super exciting um, because that one was just a stick like two years ago. Now let's talk about my citrus, which it's, it's a sad conversation. So we had a really intense freeze in January um, and we had a new puppy and I wasn't sleeping and everything was bad. And so I did not do enough for my citrus trees. Um, now 
I think I've officially lost the key lime and the Persian lime. I think I can comfortably say those are pretty dead. However, however, I'm keeping hope for a few of them. So my Republic of Texas orange, my Eureka pink lemon, my Meyer lemon, I am keeping hope for those ones. And I'm gonna tell you kind of a crazy reason why. This tree is the crazy reason why I have hope for those ones. This is a lemonade lemon. I still, the actual name keeps escaping me and I'm sure I will remember it eventually. But uh, this guy has actually come back. So um, watching this one go through the process was really interesting. It looked dead. I mean, it looked dead, dead. And then it kind of started to get some of the green back in its bark. And then all of a sudden these started coming up and I pruned it and I have this distinct memory when I pruned it, like the week after it froze, the inside of the wood still smelled like citrus. I have a freakishly good sense of smell, but it was, it was the only one that smelled like that. And so I was like, that's interesting. So then when I went to prune all the other ones, that was what I was looking for, was if the fresh cut wood smelled like citrus, which if you have citrus trees, their leaves typically smell like citrus. So, um, I'm holding out hope because these three all very much smelled like citrus. So I'm giving them citrus fertilizer every two weeks. I'm keeping them watered and I am praying that they come back, um, especially the Republic of Texas orange. That one's pretty important to me. Uh, that was the tree I planted for my grandfather after he passed away. That one started growing little sprouts from the root stalk, um, but we have not seen anything from the top of the plant yet. Um, but when I scratched the bark, everything still looks alive. And when I cut them, they still smelled like citrus. So I got them planted in better spots and I got them mulched and fertilized. And uh, I think it's just gonna be a waiting game. Uh, the limes, however, are dead. I was literally trying to cut this thing until I could smell citrus in the wood and it just never happened. So I think both the spot and where the key lime was, I'll be replacing those trees. I'm thinking about pomegranates. Um, I'm not a big fig person, but if you have any suggestions, let me know because I don't think I wanna do any more citrus. Like I have four citrus trees. I think I'm good. <laughs> They're a lot to manage, um, especially in the winter. So yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Okay, so let's talk about the grapes. <laughs> which currently just look like little sticks in the ground. Um, so I, Kim and I both love wine. Um, I enjoy the taste of wine. I enjoy a lower alcohol wine. Um, and of course we love cooking and pairing wine. So Cam's favorite type of wine is Tempranillo. Um, and so I actually found out that Tempranillo grapes do really well in central Texas. So I didn't want to do like a whole planting guide because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but I did go to a grape growing class um, at a local garden center, which was awesome. And I learned a lot about planting and growing grapes. And so um, we basically followed all of their instructions uh, apart from mulching them. We're kind of just gonna let the grass grow around them, but we do have a guard coming in for uh, weed whacking. So the whole point of these is to have another like living wall um, and then we're gonna drill holes into the fence post to create the cables for them to climb on. I'm really excited. I don't know that we'll get grapes this year. We'll probably get grapes next year. Um, but after like messing around with like making vinegar and like trying some other kind of ferments, um, I'm really excited to try and make wine. Uh, I had a really funny interaction with um, this guy at a natural wine shop down the road from my house and he was nice, but um, you know, wine snobs exist. <laughs> I mean, I was buying a $40 bottle of natural red wine. He was kind of one of those people that was like quizzing me to see how much I knew, which was annoying. Um, but then I said, oh yeah, we're actually buying, we actually are getting grapevines here in like a month. Uh, and we're so excited and we're gonna try and like make our own wine. And he was like, but like backyard wine. And I was like, yeah. 
he was like, you're not gonna like age it in like oak and like whatever he said. And I was like, no, he goes, so it's just backyard wine. And I wanted to be like, my guy, you know that like most people in the world made backyard wine until like, I don't know, not that long ago. Like, yeah, it's backyard wine. Like, relax. It doesn't have any additives or colors or, you know, flavor enhancers, which, by the way, in the U.S., uh, wine companies are not mandated to tell you, as a consumer, if they use any color or flavor additives. Just as a PSA. So, yes, we're growing grapes. I'm really excited to show you guys the process um, and how it goes, and maybe it's a total disaster. Who knows? But we're all gonna find out together. <laughs> now the next project I have been scheming about for quite a while. Um, it actually fixes an issue we have on this property. So let's talk about it. So our house is on a corner lot um, and we're on a little bit of an incline. Um, that's why you'll probably notice in my videos, sometimes my, <laughs> my camera's tilted. It's not the camera, it's the ground and I don't have enough energy and wherewithal to like fix my tripod. Um, so we're on, I don't know, it's probably like a 10 to 15 degree tilt. And um, our house, that's a house, um, sits right in the middle of it. <laughs> um, so we would get water that collected, and I'll pop up a picture or two. We would get water that collected along our foundation right here. Um, and we would call it uh, a lake. We would call it Lake, our last name. Um, and it's not good for the foundation. <laughs> it's not good for your house to have a bunch of sitting water. Um, so we actually had our windows replaced and we had gutters installed um, this winter. And uh, we were trying to be really budget conscious. So having a French drain dug or like another solution, it was probably gonna create another like rivet of water somewhere on our property that we didn't want. Um, so I started looking into rain gardens. Um, and so that's what I built, built a rain garden. Um, and what we did, we established it the same way we did the no dig bed in the back. We used these pavers, um, we used uh, compost, um, topsoil and then mulch and then the cool part is I did some serious research on um, all of the plants that are in this bed so I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video just about the rain garden and I'm gonna record how it does over time like probably over six months um, and see how we do I will tell you it's already capturing rain like it is not pooling anymore the roots of these plants are soaking everything up it's so exciting now the crazier part about this is all of these plants are shade tolerant because we have, have these trees. Not the biggest fan of them, but they do provide us some good privacy to the front of our house. Um, I don't even know what they are, but I've kept them trimmed along this back fence so that they're not like tilting over. Um, but all of these plants over here had to be shade tolerant. I used mostly natives, um, but I did use some hostas and there is an elephant ear back there, but I'm not sure that it's gonna pop up, so we'll see. But so far, it's been really fun to watch these plants grow. Um, and it's been really nice to look out this window. That window goes into our house. When you used to look out the window, you used to just see like this really patchy lawn and it just kind of didn't look great. Um, and now we're gonna be able to look out and see all these really beautiful plants. Um, so super excited about the rain garden um, and it's just this nice little piece of landscaping um, now less pretty things i finally got a garden shed <laughs> we got it from costco and i got an extra compost bin um, which i actually got my first compost out of the compost bin which was super exciting i've been learning a lot about compost um, i should have a video coming out soon about my first few months of compost um, but yeah super exciting adventure now, last but very not least, we have finally started to grow grass. Now, if you haven't been here very much, this all used to be black granite rock. We spent the whole entire fall shoveling it out. It was this rock right here. We spent the whole entire fall shoveling it out. 
Um, we moved it to different locations on the property for other things we wanted to do, but we really just always wanted this to be grass. Um, so we seeded perennial rye and Bermuda, um, and it is starting to pop up and it's so exciting. Um, because the dogs didn't like the rocks. They're not really very kid friendly for when we have a family um, They got they made it so hot out here in the summer like you could just feel the radiating heat um, From this black rock and so yeah, we have grass growing it is so exciting and it's so aesthetically pleasing when you like look out and you just have all this grass it feels like the garden it it, it was kind of starting to feel like the garden was the backyard and now i think it's starting to feel like the garden's part of the backyard so that's all really exciting um and yeah this backyard looks i mean night and day different from when we moved in and i am finally starting to feel so proud of all the work that we've done to make this our own, make it something that serves us well, make it something that serves the dogs well, um, and are entertaining, and it's all kind of coming together. So, with that being said, this is where we're starting. We'll do monthly garden tours. Um, and yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching my journey, growing as a person, as a gardener, as a grass grower, an orchardist, a venter, a rain garden native planter, a rose gardener. Um, if there's anything my 20s taught me, it was that I can really do and be anything I want. Um, so, here's to a new year. Here's to spring. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. We'll see you next time.